is this a multimeter or an oscilloscope? Because it's using pretty much the same form factor as the Rigol DHO 800 series oscilloscope that I reviewed a while ago. And is this form fact a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to answer those questions, but I'm going to try to do an objective review of this new multimeter from Rigol. And maybe you guys can help by uh, dropping a comment in the section below to let me know what you think about this new multimeter. So there are two options in this new Rigol DM800 series. There is the DM858, which I have here, and the DM858E, which is a lower spec version. Maybe the E stands for economic. I'll put up a table on screen, but the DM858 can do 10 amps on the current range 10 millifarad capacitors has 0.03% accuracy on DC volts 125 readings per second with a 500k point logging memory and these main specs are the ones which are uh, limited on the lower spec DM858E but all the other features seem to be the same so the one I have here it's 120,000 count, five and a half digit through RMS multimeter, can measure up to a thousand volts on DC, uh, frequency up to 10 kilohertz, uh, can do data logging, but as we'll see later, uh, not really. Can do temperature measurements, matte operations, comes with a, a seven inch touch screen display, which is one of the main features of this unit, and is powered via USB type C, 12 volts, three amps. DC voltage accuracy is 0.03% plus or minus 8% of the range. DC current is 0.055% for the lower ranges. Resistance is 0.05%. Now these are good specs, but again, fairly standard for an instrument of this class and they don't stand out in this price range. Uh, for example, the Unity multimeters have better accuracy specs. Something that caught my eye in the user manual is this paragraph that says, the effective bandwidth for AC voltage or current measurements is 8 kilohertz. Now I don't typically do measurements that high in frequency, but that's something to be aware of. In terms of connectivity, it supports LXI over Ethernet, has a USB device connection and USB host on the front for plugging in external storage uh, or a keyboard, mouse, or maybe even a USB Wi-Fi adapter as we did with the oscilloscope. I'll test that later. Another defining and important feature uh, for this uh, digital multimeter is the fact that it supports web view and control interface over Ethernet. Also as connectivity we have external trigger input and voltage measurement complete output via these two BNCs on the back. Makes you wonder why they went for this form factor because I can see this making sense in a school where you'd have this on a desk with maybe multiple stud students working. Uh, on one instrument, but in a lab that actually does any kind of professional work and measurements, how would this form factor work? Well, in my case, it's not optimal because I have multiple instruments uh, on my shelves up here. And if I try to put this up uh, a shelf, it will kind of take up the space of two classical uh, form factor bench multimeters like I have here with these two unity meters. On the other hand, if you want to use this as your only um, multimeter at your workbench or desk, then it starts to make sense because depth-wise, it takes up much less space and that's probably their target audience to have this desk level. Also, if you want to use this mounted to a monitor stand, then also the, this form factor starts to make sense because then you have access to this variety of uh, monitor stands to choose from and then you can slide it in or out of your work area as needed and imagine having these two boom arms one holding the oscilloscope uh, the other one holding the multimeter and you slide them in and over your work uh, surface as needed i think in that case it starts to make a lot of sense but I would also love to hear your feedback in the comments let me know is this form factor working for you or not I should also mention that in terms of packaging, it comes in a similar box to what I showed in the oscilloscope review video. It's very optimized and well protected and inside the box you get the meter, a set of silicone wire test leads, a couple of 10 amp glass fuses, an earth wire, a set of alligator clips which screw into the test leads and the USB-C power adapter rated for 12 volts, 3 amps. There's also a tiny calibration certificate but without any actual measurements printed just that it passed calibration. 
And I'm going to take a moment to mention the fact that if you decide to order one of these meters until June 21st from lashop.eu, which I'll link in the description below, they're my favorite uh, shop for test instrument related purchases. So if you make your purchase until June 20, 21st, you will get a free Rigel Bag 800, which is this nice dedicated instrument bag that can fit either the multimeter or the oscilloscope or whatever else, uh, whatever other instrument they have in the same form factor. So I think that's a pretty good deal because the bag alone is worth like 60 euros. So check out that link in the description below. Plugging in USB-C power shows this pulsating red uh, standby power indicator on the uh, backlight of the power uh, on button. I really like having this feature on my test instruments because at a glance I can check which ones have power or not at my workbench and um, powering on this meter confirms there is no active cooling fan in here it's all silent operation which is very nice uh, when compared to the unity meters which uh, kind of make noise when running the boot up time is roughly 65 seconds so at this point i'm pretty sure it must be running some kind of android operating system or similar under the hood and if i have to say this is a very very slow boot up time Yes, it is a bench meter, meaning it will stay on mostly uh, while you're working and you can argue that you have to let it warm up anyway, but man, that's a long waiting time for a boot up. And unfortunately, this is the direction the industry is taking. We have these complicated uh, OSs running on our test instruments, so there isn't any easy way around that long boot time. But man, I love this groovy yellow font. It's so big and crisp makes reading it from a distance very easy and as you probably noticed there are a bunch of illuminated uh, buttons here at the top we have dedicated buttons for the most important functions of the meter and uh, this is something that's going to be very useful you have for example dedicated ac volts dedicated dc volts and the same for ac current and dc current so you just press the button for the function you actually need directly uh, there are some secondary functions on these buttons which are activated uh, with the shift key but those functions are less often used so i'm perfectly fine with uh, this type of grouping i quite like the way the keys are arranged here the fact that they're fairly big they they're illuminated they have this nice big font so it makes your life easier when using this instrument Input jacks are conveniently located here. Uh, they are standard 19 millimeter spacing, so you can use double connectors like these, but uh, be aware there is no jack detection happening. So if you plug in your test leads into the wrong sockets, uh, you might blow a fuse. I wish jack detection was a standard feature for multimeters, especially in this class and price range. Um, also the jacks orientation is different to what we would find on an Agilent or Unity multimeter and I'll add a picture to show you the difference. As is the case with these uh, modern digital multimeters it would be impossible to cover all their possible functionality in any reasonable amount of time so I'll just cover the most important functions in this video. I'm gonna start by sharing my original factory shipped firmware. It was 1.00.19 system 1.5.2 but since there was a newer version on their website I flashed the newest so that I can benefit from all the bug fixes that might have been implemented uh, up until this point. The operation of upgrading was as simple as copying the file to the root of a flash drive and uh, initializing the upgrade from the system menu. It took something like 4 minutes for the entire procedure including the uh, reboot time and uh, it was now running the latest firmware. Now the GUI will look very uh, familiar if you've uh, played with uh, for example the DHO800 series oscilloscope, you know very similar graphics, uh, I believe the LCD is actually the same. It has a uh, built-in help menu, which effectively just opens the PDF uh, user guide of the multimeter. I guess this is a nice benefit of having the OS and the larger screen. And uh, one thing that you don't get when compared to the oscilloscope is external monitor support. So there's no HDMI output on this. Not that you would need it because with a seven inch screen, you know, for a multimeter, <laughs> there, that's plenty of uh, screen size to show the measurements and I have to mention that this meter supports dual measurement 
and by reading the info in the user manual to me it seems like it can only do so for AC voltage measurement in combination with frequency or period as uh, secondary or primary functions so in any combination these three measurements can be displayed uh, two at a time and I can also activate it for you know DC volts with DC volts but doesn't really make any sense because you know why would you have a second measurement for DC volts so upon reading on the EEV blog forum I found out there is apparently a bug affecting this uh, multimeter and I would like to check if that's present on my unit with my particular firmware which is the latest currently of uh, June 2024 so apparently when in auto ranging mode the meter is not capable to auto range from a low voltage to a higher voltage uh, if you quickly switch up to that higher voltage and it just gets stuck on the lower range sinking a few tens of milliamps which is worrying so I have an, a bench power supply connected to the multimeter it's set to output uh, 1 volts right now and I have a second multimeter set here uh, in parallel just to measure the same thing so let's watch what happens when we try to switch to a higher voltage like uh, 32 volts And yep, the bug is uh, still present in this version of the firmware. The Rigel multimeter is not showing the correct voltage, plus it's pulling like 26 milliamps, which is like 0.8 uh, watts uh, dissipated in some component inside the front end of this meter. So for sure that can't be good for the meter. Where is that power going to go? And I can even take the voltage higher to something like 35 volts where the dissipated power would be like 1 watts. This bug is also present if we're just enabling the power supply output for starting from zero using the uh, on-off feature of the power supply. And as you can see here, it's exactly the same behavior. And a couple more hints. The problem goes away if I just swap the negative with the positive leads and it also goes away if I go to a higher voltage like 40 volts and it also goes away if I switch to uh, manual ranging so it's an issue with the auto ranging feature this might not be a very common scenario but still I can definitely picture myself powering some circuit on my workbench with 32 volts and wanting to measure the input voltage you know having the PSU turned off and then turning on the PSU and noticing this behavior uh, which is on the one hand giving you wrong readings and on the other hand might damage something inside the meter so I will be reporting this bug to Rigel to see if they can come up with a fix in a future firmware update moving on with other features of the meter we can select between a slow medium and a fast refresh rate but be aware uh, it does specify that when you select medium or fast it does so at the expense of higher error uh, not a lot we are talking about microvolts here but still we have to be aware of this and it will also drop the number of digits on medium and fast you only get uh, four and a half digits we also get uh, math functions uh, but you can only enable math while not in uh, auto mode it will say settings conflict so it would be helpful if the error message would be more clear to let you know because right now I don't know what's happening uh, I know that it doesn't work in auto mode because I've read the user manual but without reading the user manual well uh, it will be difficult to figure out why it's it's not currently working so on uh, manual raging you can enable math so we can have for example uh, statistics we can have a limit function or um, power measurement it seems weird to me that you cannot enable math on auto ranging mode because you wouldn't be able to have you know like stats mean max average running if your measurement goes through a different range you would be on manual and you'd go out of range but if you're on the correct range these functions we get on a modern uh, meter can be pretty useful the uh, display menu gives you access to enable a chart a histogram or a bar graph view while still keeping the digital readout up here 
The bar graph function and its update speed is something that some users might care for and we're used to having very fast bar graph update speeds on our professional handheld multimeters like the Fluke 87, much higher than the measurement update speed. But it appears that on these modern benchtop multimeters there is no such advantage and the bar graph uh, only is as fast as the main measurement update rate. This is also true for uh, the Unity multimeters that I reviewed recently and I'm sure for many others in this segment. By clicking the measure function, we can configure things like the input impedance. Uh, we can choose between uh, 1 gigaohm and 11.2 megaohms, but again, only while being in a manual range and only if that range is up to 1 volts, not any higher. There is a limit function uh, in the map menu with, where you can set things like uh, min, max values and it will let you know when the measurement goes out of range through a beep. The continuity tester has a configurable threshold as well, which is useful in some cases. It's latched, but it's kind of slow when compared to a, a Fluke handheld meter. It's usable, it's just not the best. There is a uh, universal measurement function called any sensor measurement and with this they support sensors that output DC volts, DC current, frequency, two wire resistance, four wire resistance or temperature sensors like thermocouples, RTDs and thermistors. So it's quite a comprehensive suite of supported sensors as the name implies any sensor measurement. The user manual gives a great explanation of this functionality so please reference the user manual because I won't go into great detail here. I'll just mention the fact that there are a bunch of predefined sensors or you can even create a custom sensor which is pretty unique. Uh, I think I have not seen that in a multimeter. There is lots of internal storage available, something like 15 or more gigabytes and you can also add external storage um, if you need to in the form of a flash drive plugged into this USB port. You can capture screenshots by pressing the save button it even gives you control over the format of the image. You can select PNG, BMP, JPEG. And then I saw that instead of image, there's this data and setup option. So setup is obviously something related to settings or the configuration of the meter. You can save that in a file. Uh, but data, I, I thought that that relates somehow to data logging. So uh, you can select a CSV file. So I, I did that and I saved directly to a thumb drive, but this is where things start to get tricky. After you click save here, it's not clear how the data logging happened, how you start it, how you stop it, uh, what is the sample rate, and the file it ends up saving just doesn't make any sense if you open it up. It's just a bunch of, uh, of like measurements that were taken at that specific point but it's not like a continuous data logging. So I checked the uh, user manual and there is no explanation of data logging functionality, just some kind of saving of the current measurement data that you can reload and visualize on the instrument itself. So that was confusing because you know the first page of the data sheet does mention storage for data logging so uh, in terms of d d how many data points it can store so to do any data logging, you probably have to install their software or some other Skippy compatible utility. And I wish there was some kind of built-in data logging capability that you can turn on, save to the internal memory, and then export that as needed in a CSV file. The user manual mentions the recommended software is Rigel Ultra Sigma, which I downloaded. And this seems to be very old software that is Windows only, and I wasn't able to install this on my Windows 11 PC. It just showed the following error message. So your best bet remains some of the free or open source software options which are LXI compatible. I also checked if uh, this instrument is running Android by inserting a USB keyboard and pressing the Windows plus N shortcut, which as expected opened the Android settings tab. And here's a screenshot of the actual version it is running. Unfortunately, the trick with the USB Wi-Fi adapter doesn't work on this multimeter. There is something detected when I insert the Wi-Fi adapter, but when I try to enable Wi-Fi, it just doesn't let me do it. So it's probably lacking the necessary driver for this particular USB adapter. Moving on, I won't go into too much detail with this. I'm not a volt nut myself, but I did a quick check of accuracy with the standards that I have available here for resistance, uh, voltage, current, 
uh, capacitor in the standard and as you would expect from a reputable brand like Rigel there shouldn't be any major issues with accuracy and everything I could check is within the given spec pause the video here if you want to check out these results I've also measured the standby power usage to be around 1 watt at 12 volts and the active power usage to be roughly 7 watts at 12 volts so it's perfectly okay to run this from a PD 12 volt capable power bank should you need to do so I guess it could function for even extended periods of time of a generous power bank but realistically I think there are going to be very few users owning this benchtop meter while not owning any you know good portable multimeter so that they would have to resort to powering this one off a power bank but for what it's worth you can do that if you desire to do so the web view and control feature of this instrument is something that many will appreciate including myself because with these uh, modern instruments it's very convenient to keep them connected to your local network and just access them from any computer phone tablet for a quick screenshot um, you know a share of screen or even actual control of the instrument remotely and this works nicely in the case of this Rigel uh, and it's a very nice nice thing to have this is part of my everyday lab work and is a feature that I always want to have same as with the oscilloscope from Rigel the feature they have works really well and I know many of you would like to see how this thing is built inside but this video is already too long so the third on will get its own separate video which I will be uploading soon so now I'll give you my final thoughts on this unit so that you can decide for yourself based on this objective review if it's something you want to purchase or not this is obviously a high quality well-built instrument from a reputable manufacturer uh, the user interface is well designed quite intuitive to use but even coming from a reputable manufacturer like Rigel such modern complex um, instruments will have some bugs or issues like this one has with the auto ranging uh, bug which doesn't detect switching from a lower range to a higher range as demonstrated earlier and even though this is a modern multimeter it apparently doesn't have a built-in data logging feature or I couldn't find it maybe you guys can let me know in the comments below if you know more about that and I also have to complain about the fact that they don't include like a basic thermocouple in the package but on the plus side it does have a nice working web view and web control interface which other instruments in this price range don't have and at the time of publishing this video the lower spec model sells for around $370 while this one which is the higher spec for roughly $500 or in the EU 340 euros and 440 euros and you can also get that free carry bag if you order it now which is worth roughly 60 euros at least with LA shop you get that in the EU if you look at the alternatives in the same price range they don't have the same screen size the touch screen the web control interface but instruments like the unity UT8805E which I reviewed recently sells for less and has better accuracy specs so in in the end it really depends on what you're looking for because in this form factor with a big touch screen uh, in this price range with this set of features Rigel seem to be the only ones offering something so I'll leave you with that and I'll follow up with a turn on video I would also be interested in hearing what you think about this multimeter its features the form factor would you buy this let me know in the comments below thank you for watching and I'll see you soon